uh, working on a personal project which looks back into prehistoric Cypriot pots. I love old pots and I really wanted my pots to look a little bit primitive, maybe cracked or not, and to look like they'd been in the ground for hundreds and hundreds of years and that I'd dug them up and cleaned them very carefully. Um, so I thought that this ferret worked quite well and I decided instead of firing the ferret in a <coughs> raccoon kiln, um, partly also because I had this gas phobia at the time, so, um, that I would bin fire them, so a little bit like an above ground pit, but in metal bins, and I have various sizes metal bins. So I did exactly the same um, uh, procedure where with ferric chloride sagas, which many, many, some of you may have already worked with, where you wrap it in tin foil, but I decided to add the ink, simply to see if I were, was going to get any markings or any resist um, uh, effects and if, I've got a variety of things to show you because everything is slightly different and it's very difficult um, to explain uh, what happens with various things without actually showing you. So the first pot I decided to try ink on, which I have a photograph as well in, the, uh, in John's um, folder is this one and I um, if you look at the front bit and I'll pass it around you'll probably be able to see a, f a couple of faces which um, and some hair going to the side and also some leaves and if you then turn it around you'll see some notes appearing and a few markings here and there um, and I used, um, I used a water-based Indian ink, black. Uh, what I found very interesting was the fact that here, where I had painted the black ink on, it marked, uh, uh, it, 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 so I, I got a darker marking. But here, for some reason, where I had painted the ink on, the gaps are where I had, it, it was a resist. So in on the same pot in two you know, locations that were quite near each other, um, I got two completely different results. And here they have marked on, but they've turned a nice purple colour. So uh, this was my first pot, and at the time I thought, oh, this is nice, I can get some other nice markings, maybe resists. And so I moved on. Um, and the next time round, uh, I decided I wanted a little bit more smoke. You'll see the inside is smoked in those, so I just punctured a few holes in the tin foil which this, the pot was wrapped in. Uh, I decided I would tear some of the tin foil here and there. Um, and there's some leaves or markings painted here and there, if you have a look at it. Again, some of them here, the ink has burnt off and it's formed a resist, whereas here, it stayed on and it's a rather pale grey, and in other areas, it stays on as a black uh, marking. Um, so, I then started to see, well, why am I getting lighter yellows and why am I getting darker reds? Um, and, of course, that, it, I used the same concentration of ferric chloride, which if you use... Um, if, if you use a diluted form of ferric chloride, you can get lighter colours, and John will be talking about that later. But I did notice that because in a bin, I can't really control that much exactly which piece of wood is going to heat up and fire all the way through and which isn't, um, that the heat from various parts of the bin were affecting the end result. And one very good example is if you look in... Uh, let's see what page is it. Uh, uh, page 19. This is the front and back part of this pot with the flat all the way diagonally down at the back. I got this shocking yellow, and um, the only as I work on and, and try the inks out and the bin firings out, what I'm seeing is that if there's not that much heat then the ferric becomes more yellow rather than red and burnt 
amber colours and oranges. So um, I'm not playing here with concentration with the ferric, it's just the heat in the bin. And that can be quite fun because you can apply more heat one way if you want to. Now I sort of poke and I do quite a few things, which is um, quite good fun. Um, the other thing I noticed is that if you dip your brush in water as you're working with the ink, that you're more likely to get a resist. So on this here, I was always, I'd dip a little bit of ink on my brush and then sometimes I think, oh no, no, that's too much. So I just dip, dip it back in a bit of water. So it was a rather watered down effect. And then you can get, so this one's quite a good example of this watered down ink. Um, and you can just see some, the, the markings, the brush strokes are quite clear. There's some circular ones on one side and some uh, diagonal ones on another. Um, and then I thought, well, this is rather nice, but what if I start to use the ink as, 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 as a feature? Um, and I then did something like this, where I painted the black ink. I wanted this to come out quite strong. And so I painted the black ink on here in a concentrated form. I wiped a little bit off because I didn't want it to be too black. Um, and and this is as I, what I painted on here and what I rubbed off is precisely what I ended up with and, and as a fine result. Um, so no water on my brush, concentrated ink. I brushed a little, I, I washed a little bit off because I didn't want it to be so uh, concentrated and fired it. Uh, these markings here are where I've torn the tin foil so that I can get some smoked effects from my wood that in, as it's firing in uh, the kiln. Um, I experimented also with different type, different colours uh, of ink. What I found is that the blues and greens uh, they fire and you create you you end up with a very dirty surface. Mm -hmm. it's, it's rather grungy. Uh, pinks, violets, sepia will give you some rather nice effects, but the black in the end of, at the end of the day it doesn't really matter um, because I thought it did um, when I then started to use the ink in a concentrated mm -hmm. form. Um, so I used ink in a concentrated form uh, and I ended up with very specific markings. These are the plates, of, I think there's photographs of them as well, just to try out and see what uh, it, the effect would be. If you are working with a very concentrated form of the ink, even though it's water-based, it will become rather oily. Um, so later, uh, when John's doing the ferric, it's very important to make sure that if you have a large area of ink, to check whether the ferric chloride will bead up on there. But we'll talk about that when we are ready to wrap uh, the work. Um, and this was sepia. and. Uh, sepia coloured ink, but I've tried it again and I didn't end up with the same results. <laughs> so I thought, yes, I thought it was the colour of the ink. Um, it possibly could be. It could also be the fact that this is a mixture of uh, raku with porcelain, uh, so maybe it's also the, the, the clay. Uh, I think whenever I've mixed porcelain in it, I get slightly more. Um, kind of amber colours and uh, rather than the reds or the yellows. So playing around and experimenting with your clay is also uh, quite interesting. Um, so this is really uh, what I've how far I've worked with, with ink. It was also it was a means okay. to the end. Um, if, so if you were to today to identify one piece, um, it will, we will barrel fire it uh, eventually. Um, it's quite important to not do too much on it, I think, 
the, it looks like we don't have that much ink, but uh, a very small amount goes a long way. So if you are particularly wanting to use violets or a pink, then please share. Uh, I've also got some other paintbrushes here which you can use. Um, and as I said, if you want to have more of a resist effect, then do water down your paintbrush as you're working with, with the ink. Um, last year we had some very good results. The year before was a bit of a disaster because of the barrel. So your size of your barrel and the, the, how quick you will fire this barrel is also important. I think we had one or two really good results, one of which was Amanda. It's really lovely. Um, so that does, but there is an element, a, a very big element of surprise in this. Uh, some people say, well, can we also not do that in a Rokuko? And you could, but you couldn't really, uh, if you wanted to be more controlled, but you could never have that smoked effect coming in, um, which I think is, is rather nice. Uh, I, for instance, in this, if I had done the same idea in a normal Raku kiln, I could never have had these little smoky bits here, which I think add to the. It just would have been. Um, just would have been there. So the um, sorry, I've missed the point. So the, you know this lovely, you know these lovely peaks. Yes. Yeah. This is. This is this is what you today. What you will do is you will choose a pot and paint. A design on it mm -hmm. with ink. It can be as little as possible. I mean this one, all I did was I just painted ink on there and that was sufficient and that's all I wanted. When we start working with ferric chloride, we leave it aside to dry on the shelf. When we start working with ferric chloride, John will also tell you about the different effects you can create with ferric chloride. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have a concentrated uh, ferric chloride, you're more likely, to, and, and a high temperature firing, you will get reds. Mm -hmm. If you have a diluted form of ferric <coughs> chloride with a low firing, you will get yellows. In a above ground pit firing or a barrel firing, it's very difficult to know where your heat will be. So there's a large element of, of surprise in that. So I had no idea it would turn out like that. But now that I can, I know that what would help me more likely yeah, be, yeah, end up with a lighter colour or a darker colour, yeah. then I try and work towards that. Mm -hmm. And I try and stack my bins accordingly with definite combustibles, so and so combustibles, and this might fizzle out within two hours. Um, and normally I fire at the end of the day or around two o'clock only because it's handy. Uh, fire it in my back garden. Don't have immediate, immediate neighbours, but I put a large wet uh, towel over it and I leave it overnight. Uh, I've fired my bin in snow, in rain. Uh, it works the next morning when it's cooled down. I just don't them up um, and see what I get. Would you mind repeat that what a violet and pink ink gave? Well, the violet and pink ink, where there was this one plate with the, yeah, you, you're you more likely, if you use it in oh, the, yeah, yeah, to get slightly, that, that's what I thought, because I did use a sepia on here, but I've tried sepia again, mm. and um, I didn't get that at all. Okay. So I think what I have noticed is that the pinks and the violets sometimes tend to give very nice pinks and violets mm. tinged with a bit of black or they will sorry or they will resist i'm just thinking that the the, the colorants in the ink might have a reaction to the a, a chemical reaction to the ferric um, chloride I, I, you know, it's possible yeah, different yeah, inks yeah, will have absolutely. different chemicals yes. in them. Yeah, they, yeah, you're and, very and right. that makes me think you don't yeah. want to use acrylic inks, presumably. No, I just use Indian inks. So it's Indian inks. They're water-based Indian inks. That's made the, 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 the only ones I've used. Yeah, acrylic. Water-based no, no acrylic. Water-based no. Indian inks. And, and the blues and greens don't resist. They don't burn off. This is almost like they burn in and they look pretty dirty. Yeah, so and in fact, I think in one of these. Uh, one of the photographs um, with the tiles, 
there is one particular link, and I do mention it in here. I think it's the other book. Is it the other book, is it? Mm, this one. The one is. Um, <coughs> let's see. If you look at these tiles, and th th these, this particular tile here where I've got... It looked lovely when it was not fired, uh, but then when I fired it... Um, I hope I've got a good one to fire it. Yeah, it... I don't think I do, do I? Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah. Then I just ended up with really dirty markings on where the ink had gone on quite thick. Um, in some areas it did just burn off, but the greens and the blues are rather dodgy. Uh, whereas the reds, the violets, the pinks, the, uh, and the black. I, mean, the, I, th I think personally the black is, is best. Um, there's an empty-ish bottle here, however... If someone really wanted to have more chance of having a resist on the pot, then all you need is a nice little pot of water next to you, and you can work with this really quite well. Um, um, so that's really uh, what ferric farming is about. A, a lot of a lot of trial and error, a lot of uh, yeah, massive element of surprise. Um, but every so often, and as I work with it, and if anyone likes the technique, as you work with it, you will be able to get some uh, control. And we will talk a lot more about the ferret tomorrow yeah. and the colours and how we do all that. So yeah. this afternoon it's about choosing the piece yeah. and getting your yes. ink design on yeah. it. And, that's and it. tomorrow we'll be putting the ferric chloride onto this piece and mm. several other pieces as well. I do that so that we have the ferric chloride out and about as little as possible because there are dangers and we'll talk about those tomorrow. So mm. we'll be putting that on tomorrow. Can you do it the other way around, or do you, would you recommend always to put the ferric board on top of the ink? <laughs> I would always put the ferric on top of the ink. Having said that, last year I painted on top of the ferric. You painted on top of the ferric. Very, very nicely. Yeah. 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 Ye